Steve Scalise, or from now on as he'll be referred to as Steve Sleazy Scalise, uh, is the House Majority Whip. He's the number three Republican in Congress. Uh, he recently got that position, and uh, a lot of people thought, good, he's a conservative and you know true to principles and won't be as much part of the establishment. Now, some claim that he was more of an establishment Republican, but you have to understand these guys are all so incredibly right wing. It's easy to say he's kind of establishment after this article in Politico comes out telling you what he did, but the reality is, no, I saw the articles for myself. In the beginning, he was described as a oh, pure principled conservative. All right, well, let's find out. So it turns out, well, look, he needs uh, some staff that he's now that he's in this very important position. And this is where Politico picks up the story. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise got some help interviewing potential new hires for his press shop from an unlikely source, a federal lobbyist. <laughs> okay, now the only part of that I disagree with is that it's unlikely. <laughs> These guys are 100% in the pocket of the lobbyists. So this guy just happens to be particularly brazen, sits a lobbyist next to him as he interviews people for jobs for his government office. <laughs> I mean, why are you even in the room? Why don't you just leave and let the lobbyists do the interviews? Because <laughs> they have, that's what they, they, it's a literal takeover of our government. Okay, more details. Quinn Gillespie and Associates, uh, that's John Fury's uh, Group, that's the lobbyist that was sitting in these meetings, sat in on and participated in multiple official interviews with job candidates last month for the new Majority Whip's press operation. Scalise has not yet announced who he will name as his communications director. Oh, great. Uh, he's going to have to double back with other lobbyists, and then he'll get back to you as to who his communications director is going to be. <laughs> these are the guys who would communicate with the lobbyists, and the lobbyist is picking them. They would also communicate with the people Scalise is representing. <laughs> He's a representative, get it? Yeah, right. Okay, now he represents the lobbyists. That's why he has them in his office. Okay, Scalise enjoys closer relationships with lobbyists than many House conservatives. Not true, they all enjoy incredibly warm relationships with lobbyists. A reality that is sometimes helpful, but also adds to his reputation of being closer to the establishment wing of the party than some in the conference had wanted. Okay, yes, there's a couple of principled Republicans, literally a handful. Uh, that say, hey, you know what, stop sucking up to the lobbyists and the donors. But the overwhelming majority of the Republicans are just like Stephen Scalise. They let the lobbyists run the whole place. And you see in the middle of that, even in that sentence, Politico notes that it's generally helpful. It's helpful to get things done because they all work for them. All right. Now, John Fury says, as a former House Leadership Communications Director, I work with the office in strictly a communication strategy development capacity. You see that? He's not a lobbyist, he's just a communication strategy development capacity guy. How do you like that for a euphemism? Okay, I love these code words. And then he continues, in this role, I've never advocated for or brought client issues before the office. In fact, I've never lobbied the office. No, 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 I know you're a lobbyist, you would never lobby the office. No, I mean, you have all these clients who have business in front of this congressman's committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee, but you lobby, no, 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 he's not a lobbyist at all. In fact, I don't know if you guys know this, but John Fury is actually the Easter Bunny. Yeah, that's who he is. And he was in that office at that time in his role as the Easter Bunny, not as a lobbyist, oh, okay. Asked if this was problematic that Fury uh, is a registered lobbyist, the spokesman said, he's a communications professional. <laughs> oh, I see, he's not a lobbyist, he's a communications professional slash Easter Bunny. Okay, uh, so who does he represent? AT&T, Sony Corporation, Qualcomm, 21st Century Fox, among many, many others. Once again, all of those groups would be very interested in the Energy and Commerce Committee that Scalise sits on, let alone the fact that he's the number three Republican in the House. So this is how multinational corporations take over our government. And AT&T, look at this wild coincidence. It turns out has contributed $15,000 to Scalise this cycle, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. The telecom giant has also has business before the Energy and Commerce panel. Hmm, who could have guessed? And then finally, Politico explains, public citizens Craig Holman said that this is just one of the many ways that Republicans have, quote, inappropriate connections with lobbyists, pointing to how House GOP leaders called a list of K Street figures who could make chiefs of staff when Republicans took control of the chamber in 2010. 
I love how unusual this is. When they took over in 2010, they literally went to K Street. That's where the lobbies are. They asked the lobbies, who would you like to be our chief of staff? Remind me again, who's the boss? Who actually runs Washington? When you go to the lobbyists and say, yes, sir, uh, can I please have my chief of staff, sir, to tell me what to do, sir? I don't believe you're the boss. I believe you're the paid, let's say servant in this case, of the lobbyist who you actually work for. So sleazy skleazy wound up being a little extra more brazen than the other House Republicans and a lot of Democrats, by the way. But believe me, this is how Washington runs. You don't have to believe me, it's right there in front of you. There is an answer, wolf-pack.com.